Hi, we're in Gettysburg National Park and I'm gonna do this nice barn scene here, this beautiful white barn. My name is Jason Lee Taco. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, hit the uh, like button and uh, leave a comment or question below. So we're going to start out colors on my palette, titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, uh, permanent orange, Indian yellow, uh, yellow ochre, but, uh, this is transparent red oxide, Venetian red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and viridian. So I'm going to work out my composition here quickly. I really like the uh, color in the in the trees, so the barn is going to be more of a um, kind of an accent, if you will. I'm not going to make it real big in the composition, but we'll have it somewhat in there. But I really want to get that. Um, those beautiful autumn colors. If you're watching this on YouTube, I show the first uh, 20 minutes or so to the YouTube public, and then the rest I reserve for my Patreon supporters because of their incredible support they give me. And if you want to become a uh, member, a patron supporter click on the link below if not either way I hope you enjoy the video I'm gonna scrub this on pretty thin so that I can work over it with more opaque paint. Now there's a wall of trees here. I think I might take a bit of artistic liberty and make some of these trees shorter and show a little bit of the sky. We'll see. I may change my mind on that, but you don't need to do a documentary of what you're seeing meaning you don't have to paint it exactly how it is. You can change things around, move things, make things bigger, make things smaller to make your painting work for you. Now, some of the, uh, some of the history buffs here in the Gettysburg area, I know a few of them. They might be like, hey, that barn is not quite like that, or the trees are not quite like that there, but they could have been at one time. And who knows, maybe we'll enclose it all. I don't know, we'll see. I'm indecisive right now. We have a beautiful perfectly sunny day here and it is autumn as I'm recording this not sure when I'll be posting it but um, I'm recording in autumn and I usually We'll do, go out and do a barrage of paintings in autumn just because of how beautiful the season is. It's actually kind of greenish in there. They have some lawn in there. 
So we're going to put just a hint of green. And then they have a fence here. So let's get in some darks for that fence. You know, there's a, I like the foreground here. I almost wonder if I should have moved this barn up and shown more of the foreground instead. I might do that, which means I'm gonna have to wipe this whole thing out. Not the whole thing, but it's actually not going to be too much of a change, so we're going to enclose the whole top there. And this would just be a nice way to tone the canvas. So I'm going to take a clean brush, put some mineral spirits in it, and redraw this barn with the mineral spirits. I'm going to do it higher up. And we have a smaller building that comes out like this. And this is a shadow side of the barn, but that's got to be a cool blue. So I want to wipe off as much of this warm tone as possible. And we have the roof that comes down like that. This comes over out like that. There, all fixed up. The autumn colors are absolutely gorgeous and I'm still gonna get those in, but I really like the color of that field too and the kind of lead in it's doing.
there. Something like that. That's kind of what I was going after there. So I got a general composition worked out. I just couldn't get over that, those nice lead-in lines. Might be considered slightly cheesy, but that is a classic compositional motif that almost can never fail. Especially on the uninitiated, <laughs> to quote uh, Batman. Or Batman Begins. I kind of like that movie. Actually, let's move this one shrub a little further over like that, maybe. So just trying to compose some lights and some darks here. Let's do a little key in. of that color on the ground there. I think it's gonna, the valley is going to have to be lighter than that. But we'll start out with that. I should jump to a bigger brush here. off the palette a bit. Okay, let's get in our darkest darks. They're close to what's our darkest darks. It's a fairly dark green over here. It's the shadow of the the buildings creating on the foliage back there. So let's get that keyed in. Let's key in a little bit of our nice mowed grass that we had slightly indicated before. Some of that same color can be used for the foliage here. Maybe go a little lighter. Key in a little bit more of that. Um, foreground color. Not sure what that is, but we got the, got the color in there. Get back in there, more darks. I am out of transparent red oxide. Let's get a little bit more replenished on our palette. So we're probably not going to have any blue sky in this, being that we're emphasizing more the foreground, which is totally fine. You don't want to get everything in, including the kitchen sink. That's not going to make your painting better. A lot of um, artists, beginning artists and that, they'll, they'll try to get everything in and send a photo. And a lot of times you end up with a better painting when you crop. 
And I know, like, there's paintings I've done over the years where I'll put too much stuff in, and then I'll see, like, a crop version of it. And it's like, oh, I should have did that. I should have cropped in even more. Which is why it's good to do a lot of different uh, thumbnail sketches and things like that of your, um, of your idea. Because you might come out with something even better. Let's key in a little bit of that more intense yellow, which is one of the things that drew me into the scene. I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit so I can get it fairly clean on there. Not going to go super intense right now. And if you're wondering why I'm not explaining all my color mixtures and telling you every color I'm mixing, it's just because when you're racing against the clock like this, because that sun's going to drop fast, you, um, it just isn't time. Now, it's something that I do do in my workshops that I teach at oilpaintingplus.com. So if you're interested in having everything really explain to you in depth check that out that's where I do it if you want to see this uh, full video without any commercial interruptions that's patreon five bucks a month and if you want to see if you want to study under me and really get actual instruction that you're not going to get for free, by the way, because um, most people don't give this kind of instruction away for free. That's uh, oilpaintingplus.com. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here for the uh, YouTube public and take this to Patreon. So if you'd like to see me finish this, that's where it's at. If you do have questions in the meantime about what you've seen so far, leave a question below. If you like this video, leave me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you again.